Hi, I am Tony Russo, and this is Brief Introduction from Kate Spoilston, a short, quick, get-to-know-you type podcast where we speak with someone about what they do and ask them why they do it. This week, we are speaking with Tim Cermak. He is an application specialist for Harbison Walker International, and if you are a cremationist, then you absolutely need to know him because he's going to keep you up and running and he's going to tell you why. Um, Tim will be presenting along with some folks from Garfield Refining at the November 18th, 2025 Cremation Strategies virtual event at Kate Spoilston. The event is free, but does require email registration. You can just go to events.katespoilston.com where you can register for this and all of our other webinars. That'll do me for now. Let's uh, get into this conversation with Tim. So you are giving like a really kind of technical presentation or a more technical presentation than I'm kind of used to seeing, I'm sorry, it's called High Temperature Solutions for Cremation. And can you tell me where you came up with the notion that you'd like to give this talk and what you hope people can take away from it? Yes. So I work for Harbison Walker International and we make high temperature ceramic refractory materials. Uh, I work primarily with cremation and a handful of other applications and industries that use these high temperature resistant materials to contain various processes. Uh, so for this one, it's cremation, but I also work with things like power plants where they have very high temperature boiler systems and use these uh, refractory materials to contain that process. So working with cremation and getting to know the guys here at KB, wanted to share just some overarching things for how high temperature refractories are really important to cremation. But like other industries, they usually get forgotten. You know, they're an afterthought or just not really something different people think about. So going to review and talk about some of those important things to contain at the end of the day, it's a really high temperature process that's going on. And yourself or your operation guys are only two feet away from this very high, high temperature thing that's going on. So it's important to have the right materials there. Excellent. What actually got you into this business? How did how did you find your way in? Yeah, so uh, I started out in the industry and more the construction and engineering side of things, crawling all around large boilers, primarily in the, the power generation side of things. Uh, but then I moved over to the role I'm in now, which is uh, I'm an application specialist for Harbison Walker. So what that means is with all kinds of customers, could be cremation, funeral home uh, owner, or it could be something like a, a large power plant or other chemical plants, incinerators, all that. And uh, I help our sales team and those customers, make sure they got the right solutions in there. So kind of that bridge between working with customers and helping them, but also the technical side. These are, at the end of the day, pretty high, highly engineered products, and they're very different that each each project is a little bit different. No blanket answer for any industry or any customer. So good to get my hands nice and dirty and and make sure things are going right with every, every customer. It sounds like you're kind of in the sweet spot. My brother did. Uh, I mean, he's in a different industry, but he he was that guy, the the guy who could talk to both the normal people and the tech people, I think, is what is what he used to say. Yes. Yes. <laughs> good, good to have that bridge. <laughs> and so what do you find are the most, I don't know if controversial is, is, is the right word, but what are the things that people tend to be surprised about the most when you're when you're dealing with them like you know what what do you know you're going to get you're going to surprise people with i guess when you're talking to them yeah i guess we can go right for it the the probably biggest controversial thing for cremation uh and also some of the other industries i work with is just how things change on how you run a different unit or or the process i feel make changes all the time and don't think of changing the refractory along with that So one of the trends we've observed over the past, I'd say about 10 years or so, but really in the past five-ish with COVID and different things like that and different business concerns, uh, we saw in cremation, people were running units a lot harder, a lot less downtime, cycling faster, things like that, without doing any changes to refractory. So part of that is just talking to uh, different repair teams, customers, people are changing those practices and helping inform them on, as you change things in the process, you also need to change things in the material to match those up so you keep getting the performance you had in the past. Um, so things like that can be you know, easily forgotten, but very important and, and uh, you know, 
good for business, good for safety, uh, all important things like that. It didn't occur to me until you were just talking about it, but I guess that if you bought, you know, if you bought a, cre- a, a crematory, if you installed a crematory, let's say 20 years ago, and they mm-hmm. said it'll last for 30 years, they didn't really consider that what cremation was 20 years ago isn't, isn't what it is 30 years forward, right? Yeah, because I've, I've talked with cremation uh, unit owners who, you know, if you talk to them 15 years ago, they would be running it maybe two out of seven days a week. And that would be, uh, you know, they were happy with that performance and that worked for their business model. Uh, and now new ownership, but same unit, they're running it probably six and a half days out of the week. And, you know, you, that's definitely going to change how long the material is going to last and the wear and tear on all the components. So that's where the, the high temperature solutions definitely can get forgotten, but are very important. And so when when you come in, do you have do you, do you have like a, a plan for like if the if the setup looks wrong or uh, I guess you would know if there was an incompatibility before you, you showed up at the place. But, you know, that these these little changes, again, that that funeral homeowners and crematory operators might not realize because this is such a technical part of it. Yeah, there, there definitely are clues and, and things like we joke um, that we do postmortem testing on refractory materials. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, in the, in the other industries that we work with, no one thinks of that as a joke or funny, but with cremation, it definitely gets to be funny. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if, if someone turns off their unit or sends us a picture of something, there's definitely some visual clues. And we can, we've also looked at and done different um, highly scientific testing with microscopes and x-ray diffraction and all those fancy things. Um, but but even just visually, sometimes uh, you know someone can tell us what that what their concern is or what they're seeing and send us a picture. And you know, there's there's certain cases where uh, refractory is only going to have certain wear when it gets to a certain temperature. So visually, I can say like, oh well, you know, you might think you're running at X, Y, and Z temperature, which you're supposed to be running at, but you're only going to see that melting refractory or that color or that you know whichever wear uh, I can see in a in a picture when you get to certain temperatures. So there's different clues we can help to, to be like, okay, yeah, it might, might be time to consider a change to your refractory for, for the next repair cycle. And does this generally have to do with, so running it long, but is there also running it not hot enough for too long? Is that, is that an issue that you face? Um, no, because also cremation is an interesting one that it runs for the most part, uh, on the lower end of our temperature spectrum. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. right. you work with PowerPoints. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah, so one of the other segments I, I support is the carbon black industry and their units will go up to 3,200 plus, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So cre- crematory units definitely are on the lower end of the material we make, but, um, so, so running low temperature is not an issue. The, the biggest thing we tend to see is just with how much the the units are cycling it's important to have a material that can withstand thermal shock and and all that change in temperature at pretty quick uh time periods excuse my ignorance on this because you said something earlier that i i need you to go back to you said you you can eyeball things but when you were saying that you could eyeball things you mentioned that sometimes you use a microscope did you say what what do you what do you use microscope what kind of what kind of evaluation do you do that that is that detailed yeah so um it's been a while since we've done one for cremation, but I can also pull up all the, the past reports we've done. But we can actually take a physical sample from the previous material. So um, for I'll give an example from the, the power industry that we we're tearing out a sample where they were not sure if it was going to be the right material. Um, there was slag and chemical attacks. So the actual fuel they were burning was going into the, the brick lining. So we took that sample to our lab and they could actually cut it apart and use different microscopes that um, some were visual looking at the microscopic structure at crazy high magnification levels. Other ones were doing actual chemical analysis. So from that, they could see, uh, was it the fuel that was penetrating through? And if so, what what chemistry was it? And then from there, we could develop or turn to one of our products to uh, resist those specific chem- chemicals in the, the fuel. And, um, you know, we don't usually have to do that type of testing for cremation because it's pretty standardized you know there's mm-hmm. variations in it but it in the history of it it was helpful to use some of that technology to understand it uh like an example is we understand alkali attack that occurs from the cremation pro- process you know the organic matter that's being burned in whichever part of cremation uh it's important to have that alkali resistance in the refractory material and we can also do other things to make sure that's the matchup like there's 
can be a slight difference in what material might recommend for uh, human cremation versus now you're seeing different things with the the rise in pet cremation or um, other things like the more biohazard medical waste cremation all have slightly different chemical compositions so we can you use our data from the past using that chemical testing to know which which product to recommend and why I, I guess this is a question I should have asked earlier but I'll ask it now so why would someone one call you like when when do you get the phone call yeah so myself being an application specialist and for Harvest and Walker where we make the refractory material if you're uh, getting a refractory or a, a cremation unit new from an OEM the refractory is already installed you're ready to go you know turn key hmm. once you get ready to do the repair if things are going good and you uh, are working with the OEM you go right to them and they typically will be working with myself um, and Harbison to make sure that's where they're getting you know refractory and putting the right ones in there to just uh, keep relining that unit but if you start to see something where you know you maybe got a, a unit that's now doing something different than it was initially designed for and you have refractory questions you can give me a call uh, if you have something that's a concern you're seeing you know premature wear or or something funky going on can give me a call and uh we'll work to to make sure things are right but uh here at harbison we make the the high temperature ceramic refractory material that's lining your units we're not doing the installation so um can recommend and help you find different ones that we work with uh, most of the oems and and uh, service teams and all of those people so we can help uh, coordinate that or help support if they have any questions and then we have the material stocked at, at various locations all around the U.S. and at our different plants. So, um, you know, once you're ready to to get that material and if your service team is not doing that, we can help you get that to your job site. Excellent. And that's pretty much all I have for you, unless you have something else for me. Is there something I should have asked and didn't or something you thought you'd get the opportunity to say, but I didn't provide it? Yeah, I think that that covered it all. Just we'll looking forward to talking at, at our digital summit in November and share some different things about refractory and the high temperature solutions that are required, kind of the forgotten part of cremation, but it'll be fun talking about all the different things, the different trends we're seeing, different ways we can help support you and just some of the basics of this uh, vital component that you know a lot of us don't really know about. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it, Tony. Brief introduction was a Kate Spoilston production it was written and edited by me tony russo please subscribe wherever you're listening now we have these bonus episodes every now and again but we have our friday news show which is out every friday and we have our monday magazine style interview show which is every other monday so this week as i'm speaking there are going to be three podcasts out um, and so there's plenty of entertainment for you as you travel along. Hope to see you at the November 18th event. Again, just go to events.katesboylston.com where you can sign up for all of the Kate Boylston events. Okay, we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.